Welcome to Greener Earth Talk series. My name is Linda Lowen and I am so excited and pleased to be talking to Colleen Anz this afternoon. Colleen has recently joined the team of Green Action Centre in Winnipeg as the Living Green, Living Well Program Coordinator. So I am really excited to hear what she has to share with us today about Green Action Centre and about the various programs and initiatives that is supported by the Green Action Centre. Welcome Colleen, it is so great to have you here. Hi, thank you Linda, it is wonderful to be here talking about this today. Fantastic. I am sure that many people may not know what the Green Action Centre is or what the Green Action Centre does. So could you just give us a brief overview of how Green Action Centre supports Manitobans? Yes, so we uh, focus our primary areas of work in green commuting, composting and waste reduction, sustainable living and con uh, resource conservation. And we're based in Winnipeg, but we serve all of Manitoba in an effort to help people live green and live well through environmental education and providing them with environmental solutions. Fantastic. And I would imagine that some of those solutions are on your wish list that's on your website and a way to bring awareness to some of the things that Manitobans can do in order to make life a little bit greener, make their living well, living green. And could you tell us about some of the initiatives that uh, Green Action Centre supports to, in hopes that some of these things from the wish list are actually implemented by the public or any governing bodies? Yes, so at Green Action Centre, we really want to inspire action of um, citizens and the public uh, because individual changes uh, do make a difference and they are important, but real uh, structural changes is where we'll see uh, the big difference in our community. And with our wish list, it's basically uh, our hopes and dreams for Manitoba uh, for the coming year. A lot of them are uh, reiterated from the uh, previous year because uh, they haven't quite met them yet, but uh, it's an ambitious list, but it is totally possible. Uh, we want to focus a lot on waste reduction and um, through that we focus on composting. Uh, the Win City of Winnipeg has their uh, pilot project in curbside compost pickup this year and we're so excited to see that uh, get started and we really hope that at the end of it we can see it implemented citywide and in other municipalities municipal sorry <laughs> implemented citywide and in other municipalities in Manitoba. Uh, as well as uh, sustainable transportation. So investment in transit and um, active transportation. Uh, throughout this pandemic, we've noticed that Winnipeg is very uh, transit dependent. So anything to get people out outside, <laughs> sorry. That's fantastic. Yes, I was aware of the compost pilot project. And I think that is great because that will allow more of the waste from people's houses and homes, all the organic waste, to go into a facility where you can compost more than what we actually can in our backyard compost system because we don't get the heat. Is that right? Yes, so you can't compost everything that is labeled compostable in your backyard just because of the ingredients in it. They need a certain amount of heat to break down and that is what you get in um, the industrial composting sites as well as our Compost Winnipeg um, uh, social enterprise that we have. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the heat uh, or the capacity in our backyards. But you can do a lot of uh, food waste reduction uh, composting uh, through backyard composting. So. Fantastic. So if you're not part of the pilot project, then compost in the backyard. And that could be anything from quite simple digging a hole and throwing your food scraps in it and covering it up with other brown waste or getting some sophisticated type of or composting bins and things like that. There's all sorts of different ones on the market. Fantastic. You also talked about transportation and getting people more 
to use alternative forms of transportation than using their personal vehicle, being one person or two people in the vehicle. Um, before we get to that, though, I have to say that I have noticed, even just walking on the streets over the past, let's say, 10 months, there are a lot more people using foot power. So that is great to see. But tell us a little bit more about the transportation initiatives that you have. Yeah, so we really want to see uh, Winnipeg invest more in uh, transit and the infrastructure so that we may have a efficient uh, and reliable transit system. So we really advocate for, for citizens to bring this uh, to the attention of their elected officials and uh, really be on side with um, wanting that and having that demand so that uh, we can get somewhere with our um, infrastructure and uh, the city's money can go towards um, transit and uh, really help us get around the city um, easily and sustainably. And as well as we have our open streets program, uh, which is for schools and um, encourages kids to cycle, walk and use their foot power to go to school. So uh, it's been great uh, in the pandemic when they kind of closed the streets off and everyone could get outside and um, walk and enjoy the fresh air. And that's really what we want to uh, encourage and foster in uh, younger children so that they can bring that up into their adulthood. And you know what, Colleen, you have just touched on a few things. So if people want to learn more about all these initiatives and all these other fantastic resources that are on your website, they would go to greenactioncenter.ca, right? Yes. Yeah. And through there, you'll see all of our tabs on waste reduction, sustainable transportation and everything like that. Perfect. And you've got some fun activities as well. And I noticed that you have a 10th anniversary coming up and that is the 10th anniversary for the Jack Frost Challenge. And that sounds like lots of fun. So let me, let's, um, let's hear what you have to say about the Jack Frost Challenge. Yes, so the Jack Frost Challenge is a challenge to uh, get a team together or register as an individual and uh, get outside and uh, try a bunch of different ways of active transportation. So pretty much anything other than uh, driving yourself in your car uh, is welcome. And it's just a way to get Manitobans to appreciate the outdoors and still stay active throughout the winter. And that's really important. I think in order to really embrace and enjoy winter, winter, we need to take part in some of these fantastic activities. So the Jack Frost Challenge, what is the, what is the actual challenge itself? What, is, what do the teams need to accomplish over the week? Uh, so for the week of February 7th to 13th, you need to accumulate 130 kilometers as a team. So you don't have to do it together, you can do it separately, uh, but all of your kilometers have to add up to 130 by the end of the week. And by doing so, you're entered uh, into a bunch of cool prizes that we have with a lot of our um, sponsors and local uh, companies and organizations all over Winnipeg and Manitoba. Fantastic. And anybody can enter this? Is this for, you know, families or workplaces or friends or any of the above? Yeah, so all of the above. And uh, we even have our Jack Frost Challenge for kids, uh, which is directed uh, to the younger ones and getting them outside. And we have a uh, workplace registration. So if you want to uh, get all of your coworkers together, you can, um, uh, sorry. If you get all your coworkers together, it's uh, good for your business and uh, your companies coming together. Or you can even have a friendly competition between departments um, and things like that. So, yeah. And if not, then get a couple of your friends together or register as an individual because there's team and individual prizes. Fantastic. And I just like to tell everybody that I am part of a team. So we are hoping to get the hundred and 30 kilometers over the week from February 7th through 13th. And I would encourage everybody to sign up either as a family team or as a workplace team, or if you're part of a group or a community, get a few people together. Uh, uh, what are the numbers of team members that are permitted on any of the teams, Colleen? 
So for um, a, just a team of your friends, it's between one and five members. Uh, and that's totally fine. If you're going to do a workplace or a school or a community group, then it's actually unlimited at that point. So people can just uh, enter and the total amount amount of kilometers gets divided by however many people you have on your team so that it's fair for everyone involved and um, everyone can do their part. Fantastic. So if you want to register for the Jack Frost Challenge, you would go to greenactioncenter.ca slash Jack Frost Challenge. Now, is there a deadline for registration? As you register before February 7th, what is made then will count. So yeah, just before the challenge starts. Okay, so you've got roughly just about a week or give or take a couple of days. Fantastic. That's awesome. And I am just really excited to see what, what happens with the Jack Frost Challenge, how many people get out, because over the last 10 years, the Jack Frost Challenge has been increasing in numbers of participants. So get out there, make this the best year ever to celebrate Green Action Center's 10th anniversary of the Jack Frost Challenge. Super, Colleen, are there any other initiatives that are coming up, let's say in the spring or in the summer that you just want to touch on or are there any other initiatives that are currently running that we haven't mentioned yet? Yes so currently right now we do have our prairie dog projects uh, on our website and available to view and use by anybody. Um, we are uh, funded by the Safe at Home Manitoba uh, grant that they had out this year and through that we're able to provide more resources online for people to make eco projects at home with their families. Fun! Yeah, so yes. a little bit about them uh, just to clarify um, is it's an effort to keep kids learning uh, sustainably and having fun at home and uh, you can do this as your family and uh, to support your family units. And uh, I think it's really important to learn at home in this time of isolation and just in general. So. Absolutely. And you have plenty of resources and different ideas for people to do on, the, on your website as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. So that is at greenactioncenter.ca slash prairie dog projects. And uh, you can find any sort of resources, PDFs, worksheets, as well as uh, videos um, for all kinds of ages. And um, we also have prizes available to be won for people who try out our projects and uh, post them as well. So. Fantastic. So prizes for both challenges, the Jack Frost Challenge and for the Prairie Dog, um, Prairie Dog Project. So that's awesome. Now, obviously there is, not obviously, um, I would gather that there's no fee for any of this. So can you confirm that? And basically all we need is our feet or snowshoes or skates or skis or whatever for the Jack Frost challenge. And we can use items that are around the house for the Prairie Dog Project. Yes, so both initiatives are free uh, for uh, no purchase necessary. And um, for Jack Frost Challenge, you just need to get out. You don't even need skates, but it's awesome if you do because um, any sort of active transportation is great to be outside. And uh, Prairie Dog Projects are mainly things that you can find around your home and things that you can reuse and upcycle um, and just minor equipment, so. I will be really excited to see what sort of recycling or upcycling projects come up in the photos. I always think it is so neat to take an item that has one purpose and just totally turn it around. Like people using rubber boots as planters for outside in the spring and just using paint cans or coffee cans for planters as well. So there's lots of really cool ideas. And like Colleen said, if you want to see some ideas or read about some of the projects that we've talked about or other resources for living well and living green, you can go to greenactioncenter.ca.